Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 22nd. First up, this was sent to me by Navy Thomas 8. This is a college lecture actually at the um, Naval War College by Mary Cummings. Um, it's kind of a long lecture. It's almost an hour, but I still think it, from a geek perspective it's very interesting. Tom gave this to me and I was kind of, we were talking back and forth chatting about whether the viewers of the TDD report would really be interesting in watching a lecture like this. So this is kind of a test if it's something that you want me to, to do a few more of these. I try to make them to where they're not dry, to where they're uh, easily understandable, but still uh, a lot about technology. And in this case, she deals with um, something that I've been thinking about myself. Now, her talk is on autonomous weapon design and deployment and the ethics involved, but I'm thinking about the fact we're going to have to think about ethics in a lot of autonomous type of things, especially uh, when we reach the age of our, our grandkids and great-grandkids. They're just going to grow up with it. They're going to have cars that not only have automatic braking and automatic traction control like my car has, we're going to have uh, cars that even take over control to help you avoid accidents. And uh, then basically instead of the human being being in the loop, the machine's taking over. And is the, did the machine, you're going to have to argue, did the machine actually make a decision that led to a better outcome or not so and uh, well anyway if, if you're interested in more talks like this just let me know and I'll add them to the TDD report and next up this was sent to me by Yvonne this is Rymac Automo Automotive it's uh, there's a design called Concept One and that's just the, the part of it really this is a, a really cool looking vehicle I'll, I'll put some pictures up here um, Looks like something that you would think would be designed in Japan, maybe Germany, maybe somewhere in the United States, something like that. Looks like kind of an exotic sports car designed by them, but believe it or not, this was designed in Croatia, and it's 90% uh, local sourced parts from Croatia. Uh, I think Ivan told me that the tires and the brake systems were sourced elsewhere, but pretty much everything else on the car is sourced locally in Croatia. Now, obviously, this is another concept vehicle, and when they do put it out, if you have to ask the price, you probably can't afford it. But if you actually go to other sections of this, you'll see that the components themselves, they'll sell individually for other people developing other types of cars. So um, that's kind of neat, too, that they'll break it apart, and you can just buy parts of it and then um, design your own type of vehicle or maybe... Um, if it's good for um, another country that wants to manufacture in volume, maybe they could use it for even another type of car. But the other thing about it, too, is there's also something that is affordable, um, at least to the average person. I mean, more affordable, I would say. I think it's running, when they release it, about $6,500, but it's the Grape, G-R-E-Y-P, the world's most advanced electric bicycle. And this, I would say, is almost probably what you would call a hybrid, about halfway between a bicycle and a motorcycle. This does not have your wimpy little motor like a lot of bicycles with the add-on 300 kilowatt, 600 kilowatt electric motors. This is a 12 kW in-wheel motor. So um, this thing has a pretty decent range. It'll go 120 kilometers. It's got a lithium battery. And it actually looks rather cool, too. Now, still, for a lot of people, $6,500 is a little bit out of the price range, but it's still um, comparable to the price of a, of a decently uh, set-up motorcycle, I would say. So... You know, something to check out. It's uh, got a lot of links and a lot of things to explore there. And uh, speaking of things to really explore and a lot of cool links and pictures, this was sent to me by Tim M. Battle of Britain, see how Spitfire World War II fighters, fighter planes are restored in New Zealand. This outfit called Avspex in New Zealand will take, if you can come up with a junk um, Spitfire. I, according to them, there's like only barely over 50 of them still flying, and there's only 200 and something in existence. But if you can get a hold of a junk one for uh, around a million dollars and then give it to them to put another million dollars worth of restoration work in it, you can sell it for $3.4 million. So, yeah, all you have to do is just find one that's, uh, even if it's in junk condition, that most of the parts are there, make a little profit maybe. But basically what I would just wanted you to look at was some of the uh, photographs here as I post them up. They do a very detailed restoration. I mean, when it rolls out of the hangar, they have it set up just like it is factory brand new. And for me being a geek, the thing I really like is the pictures of the interior of the cockpit and the controls and stuff like that. I mean, basically, it looks like you got in it just the day after it was first manufactured. So 
they do a decent job. And yeah, if anybody has a spare uh, 3.4 million sitting around, maybe you could pick up something like that. I just like the fact that they do take the time to restore them beyond just museum display quality, but restore them and still have them in flight quality. You know, maybe by the time they're done, maybe we'll get close to a hundred of these things that are actually flyable and still can uh, go into the air. Kind of cool. This next one is from Brenda J. This is just something kind of fun to play around with. It's uh, you, you first open up the the website and it's just this kind of maroon looking blank slate with this little control panel off and up to the right there. And what you do is you just basically take your mouse and click on it and just drag and you've got all these kind of swirls and stuff like that. It, to me, I think what they're doing is they're just doing a, a fluid dynamics type of uh, an engine rendering engine on this thing. And uh, it's just kind of fun to play around with, really, the, with the different controls and stuff like that. You can uh, you can freeze it. You can start over again. You can reset the particles. You can put different qualities. It's just, it's just kind of something fun to play around with if you got a little bit of time to kill or maybe you're waiting for something else to happen or um, maybe a video's rendering or something like that. You just kind of play around with this and do the different swirls and things like that. Just a fun little game to play around with. And finally... This is uh, this was from ABC News. If you're uh, sick and going to stay home from school, uh, maybe you won't be able to just lay around or play video games or stuff like that, especially if your uh, mom is into technology and she works for a technology company. This uh, student here uh, had his appendix removed, and then uh, after missing a week full of weeks of worth of school, his mom sent a little robot to school. Uh, I'll play just a little bit of this, but I won't play the sound because of the fact that as soon as you get the sound, the YouTube will na snag it for copyright. But, yeah, this little robot avatar of his is uh, roaming the halls of the school. So instead of his second week uh, off of school in a row, he actually gets to catch up with his studies. So depending on your viewpoint, uh, pretty good or pretty bad So uh, for him. Uh, kind of cool to have mom in a high technology company, but maybe not cool in other ways if you wanted to stay home and play video games for another week. So anyway, that's it for this week, everybody. Take care. I will catch you next week.